Heisenberg is with us this week. Now, before I get into raw reactions, I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who went over and retweeted my tweets last week, trying to get me over 5,000 followers. Not only did we get to 5,000, we're up to 7,000 followers on Twitter, which means I have earned myself a pro wrestling tease store. There's no designs up there right now. I have submitted three. Those will be available in about a week or two. As soon as they are, I will let everybody know so you guys can go check it out. And hey, maybe buy a few if you're so inclined. With that out of the way, let's get into the triumphant return of Raw Reactions first thing in the morning. Where did you think you could go? Because everyone already knows it's 20 to 1. Yeah, so you better run. The show kicked off this week with Stephanie McMahon, Mick Foley, and Roman Reigns in the middle of the ring. Now, Reigns is understandably pissed off about the outcome of his match last week where Rusev and Seth Rollins both interfered, therefore costing him a chance at the Universal title. Mick Foley decides to make a match between Seth Rollins and Rusev to punish them for their interference. He also makes a United States Championship match between Rusev and Roman Reigns at Clash of Champions. He's still not done. He decides to screw over my boy Kevin Owens and make a cage match between Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens, and that'll be the main event for this evening. Oh, but trust me, we'll get to that. First matchup this evening was between Seth Rollins and Rusev. Now, what I took away from this match is that Seth Rollins is now clearly a babyface. Why is that, you ask? Because when he took off his shirt, the ladies whistled and they hollered and they were loving every minute of it. Now, if you ever want an indication that a guy who is a heel is slowly turning babyface, it's when the ladies whistle when you take off your shirt. Now, as far as the match goes, it, it suffered the same problem that pretty much permeated throughout the night. It really didn't feel like it mattered who won, and nothing highlighted this more than the actual finish. Both men ended up brawling to the outside, ignoring the count of 10, therefore making it a double count out. They continued to fight up the ramp, and then Seth Rollins kicked Rusev off the stage. An impressive fall of almost two whole feet. My God, that man has a family, Seth. And then Rollins got up on the announce table and hit a splash onto Rusev, who was on the floor. Yeah, really, really exciting stuff. Now we go backstage with Dana Brooks, Charlotte, and Mick Foley. Now Dana points out to Foley that when Sasha pinned Bailey last week in their triple threat match, both women's shoulders were down, and therefore the title match at Clash of Champions should be cancelled. Foley, since he loves screwing people, he decides to make the match at Clash of Champions a triple threat match between Charlotte, Bailey, and Sasha. Still backstage now with Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho, who has noticed that the conspiracy is alive and well on Monday Night Raw thanks to Mick Foley, and that he is compiling a list of everything that Foley has done wrong and will present it to him later on this evening and that he will most definitely not like. Yeah, we got Braun Strowman versus Sin Cara next. Take a wild fucking guess who won this one. <sighs> Absolutely thrilling. Up next, we got Sasha Banks and Bailey versus Charlotte and Dana Brooke. Now, early on, Bailey seemed to have everything under control, but eventually, Dana and Charlotte managed to isolate her away from Sasha Banks and take complete control in the match. Bailey did eventually make a tag to Sasha Banks, who came in and went right to work. That didn't last very long, however, as Charlotte took advantage of the injured lower back of Sasha Banks to completely take control once again in the match. Sasha found herself exactly in the same position that Bailey was in earlier in the match. She eventually made the tag to Bailey. Bailey went on an absolute tear, cleared the ring, and looked to have this thing in the bag. However, Dana Brooke prevented her from hitting the Bailey to belly on Charlotte, which gave Charlotte Charlotte enough time to nail her with a big boot for the 1-2-3, the winners of this match, Dana Brooke 
and Charlotte. Backstage again with Seth Rollins who's crying his eyes out to Stephanie McMahon and wants to know why she has seemingly turned her back on him. She goes on to explain to Seth that maybe Kevin Owens was right about Seth Rollins and that he's nothing but a failure and that's why Triple H decided to turn on him and grant the title to Kevin Owens. Stephanie then goes on to endorse Kevin Owens and says that Kevin Owens is the man to lead Raw into victory over SmackDown. My god, that woman is brilliant! Up next, we got Bo Dallas versus a guy who is clearly stuck in the 80s. Bo Dallas does his thing where he reads shitty amateur poetry before the match and then proceeds to beat the shit out of the guy who looks like he belongs in a hair metal band. Again, really awesome, great stuff. So compelling, edge of your seat type of deal, guys. I couldn't keep my eyes off the screen. <laughs> continue our best of seven series here with Sheamus versus Cesaro. Now Sheamus is up three matches to two and I'm not getting into this match because it was the same fucking thing we've seen five other times before. My main problem with this whole best of seven series thing and if you remember I was all for this as long as there was some sort of gimmick or maybe a stipulation added in to make things a little bit more interesting. Nope! Just give us the same match over and over again and hope for the best that we won't notice. Well, we noticed and it's fucking boring. My main issue with this was this whole best of seven series concept was to prove which one between Sheamus and Cesaro was the dominant one. Well, explain this to me, YouTube. If you got one guy who's won three matches and the other guy has won four matches, on what fucking plane of existence does that make one man more dominant than the other? If anything, he's just squeaking by by one simple win. It makes absolutely no sense and it completely makes this best of seven series a gigantic waste of time. Next, we have Jericho in the middle of the ring and he is giving us the honor of reading out the list of Jericho. Now, the first point on that list was how Foley was trying to drive a wedge between Chris Jericho and his best friend, Kevin Owens, which we all know is never going to happen because two better friends the world has never seen. Jericho moves on to point number five, Foley's terrible, awful, horrendous fashion sense, which was never more evident than with that leopard print shirt he was wearing. What the fuck were you thinking, Foley? And then for some reason, Jericho skips a bunch, moves on to number 12, how Foley has developed an affinity for Sami Zayn. Now Tweedledee and Tweedledumass, Enzo and Cass decided to make their way out, started talking shit, New Day did the same thing, Shining Stars came out as well as the club, I'm skipping all of it because it, no one said anything of any real consequence and I honestly would have preferred just listening to Jericho's list. Speaking of lists, Jericho finally decides that he is totally scrapping his original list and making a brand new list, the list of stupid idiots and Everybody is on it! Now, as the talking segment was coming to an end, Sami Zayn came out from backstage and attacked Chris Jericho. Now, this was all done to set up a 10-man tag team. 10-man tag team! Yeah, I guess if you have the bodies, you might as well use them! So, the match ended up being Enzo and Cass with The New Day and Sami Zayn versus Chris Jericho, The Club, and The Shining Stars. This is a 10-man match, so we all know I'm not going to review it. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this the porno treatment. Right to the finish! Enzo and Cass basically hit the bada <laughs> for the 1, 2, 3 to pick up the win for their team. Now, the match was somewhat okay, I guess. But, uh, yeah, nothing too special, so you're really not missing anything. Oh, good. Foley's back. But he's actually doing something pretty cool here. He's introducing the first four members of the WWE Cruiserweight division. Those four men are Rich Swan, Grand Metalik, Cedric Alexander, and the Brian Kendrick. Now, before I go any further, I have to state right off the bat that Cedric Alexander and Rich Swan stole the show for me here. I loved these guys together. What chemistry in the ring. What a fantastic performance they put on. But in the end, it was Brian 
Kendrick, who won and who is going to go on to Clash of Champions to face the Cruiserweight Champion, TJ Perkins. Now, in my opinion, at Clash of Champions, they should book the Cruiserweights right off the bat. First match of the night, the Cruiserweights. Now, why is that? The Cruiserweights have a very explosive, very easy to understand style. You don't need to be a huge wrestling fan to appreciate the athleticism displayed in any cruiserweight match and i think it would be just a great way to get the crowd involved really looking forward to the match between brian kendrick and tj perkins which led us to our fucking main event which featured kevin owens versus roman reigns in a cage match now i had no problem with the match itself kevin owens and roman reigns have a certain kind of chemistry together and they usually put on pretty decent matches this was no different my main issue was with the finish Oh, oh, Eric, you're just pissed off because Kevin Owens didn't win. No, actually, that's not my problem. Let me tell you what my problem is. You had Kevin Owens lying no more than three feet away from the cage door. Roman Reigns had time to climb up the cage, go over top, climb halfway down, and then jump to the floor to win the match. You make your champion look like he can't crawl three feet to victory six days before he's supposed to defend his universal championship you know your main title on the fucking show you make your champion look like a complete chump right before he's supposed to defend his title whereas roman reigns is only going for the united states championship a lower tier title that means absolutely nothing but god forbid Anybody else should look strong on the roster besides Reigns. Don't get me wrong. I am a Roman Reigns fan. I think he's a phenomenal talent. But my problem is with Vince McMahon's obsession with him. As long as Roman Reigns looks strong, Vince McMahon's in the background fucking jerking himself off. Oh, yeah, brother. Oh, look how strong Roman looks. I'm never going to learn my lesson. Got to make Roman strong. It makes no fucking sense. If Roman Reigns is the only guy on the roster that matters, who the fuck cares if he beats anyone because everybody else is a gigantic fucking chump. It, it's just, it, ugh! Sorry, sorry, I had a little moment there. Whenever I think about Vince McMahon's thought process, my brain fucking implodes. There you have it guys, my raw reactions for the week. Needless to say, I wasn't very entertained by this week's show. I felt like it just dragged on and on forever. Most of the segments were completely forgettable and most of the matches meant absolutely nothing. And to cap it off, you made your champion look like a complete chump. No wonder SmackDown is quickly becoming the must-see show on WWE programming. It's an hour shorter, so it's a lot easier to get through. They listen to the fans. Imagine that, a wrestling company listening to the people that actually watch their product, which, by the way, is dwindling by the week. And I just, you know, I'm over it. I'm over this whole obsession with Roman Reigns. I'm over with the fact that nobody else seems to be given a chance besides Roman Reigns to really shine and be dominant. And even when he is dominant, the people just don't care. Vince McMahon's refusal to swallow his pride and move on to something else is killing Monday Night Raw, in my opinion. Now, there were some bright spots, two of them, in a three-hour show. Chris Jericho continues to be one of the most entertaining guys on the roster and is having a tremendous run. And I thought the cruiserweights were really, really entertaining this week. And I really hope to see more from them in the future. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and share it with your friends. It really helps out the channel. If you want to join the Broski Club, hit that subscribe button. Be sure to check out ProWrestlingTees.com slash FTITM in the coming weeks for awesome t-shirt designs. Go check out my broskies over at kfabetoday.com for all kinds of great wrestling related content and our award winning podcast. I mean, I made up the award, but it's still award winning. And until next Tuesday morning, guys, these have been my raw reactions. First thing in the morning or, you know, the afternoon this week. Sorry. Party.